What's up guys? I wanted to do a video showing you the progress of the course. All right, so first let's go over the earnings of the course because this is something I'm pretty proud of. It's done better than I thought for sure. And I'll go over a mistake that I made that kind of screwed me over at the beginning. So I've earned $2,000 from the course so far. And I have a second course about chronic fatigue, but it's a free course. And that doesn't really have anything to do with money. Um, so we're just going to be talking about the dropshipping course. Okay. So if we go to the revenue, you can see the monthly payouts for it. The first month earned $900, second month 500, third 500. And this month is still in progress, but it's on track to be like five or 600. Um, and so this is as much alone as I was earning from Starbucks, um, which is fantastic. I was earning about $600 a month from Starbucks. I wasn't working very much. I was working like 20 hours, um, 20 hours a week, something like that, uh, and sometimes less than that. Ideally, I loved the, the, the weeks where I had two days a week, but it's just really comforting to, to have, have other income now so that like, I don't have to rely on any one thing, and that, that it's really great. And I didn't expect Udemy to happen this fast. Um, but what, what I realized is the reason that it, I was able to get it up this high, this quickly, because um, I'm not a big Udemy instructor. Don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to say that at all. There are tons of huge Udemy instructors. And this course has so much further to go to get anywhere near being like a, one of the more wealthy courses on Udemy, right? But it definitely, I have a really solid start. Like it's unusual to earn two grand in your first like three months. Um, and most of that is because I was running the YouTube channel for six months prior. So while it's true that I didn't publish the course, I was building the audience that would engage with the course for six months, you know? So that's a lot of work that makes a difference versus just making a course without having some kind of audience that is interested in it, right? Um, so... Let's see, there's, let's go over the mistake that I made. So this number could be between three and $4,000. This is money that I've received. I could have earned up to double what I've currently earned. And the mistake I made is at launch, I did not have a coupon system available. So everybody who was waiting to buy the course and bought it, um, they like didn't like, and just to give you a frame of reference, about half of my students now, half of them are from that original launch period. So there was more people enrolling then than any of the average months, right? So every time they purchased the course, they were just purchasing it from Udemy. And that got me like an average of 2 or $3 um, because I wasn't claiming credit for those purchases because I didn't have a coupon system set up. So when you guys use like a link on YouTube, if you look in any one of my YouTube videos, um, let's just go to the channel real quick. If you look in any one of the YouTube videos, then you'll find I have a link to the course, and that course, that link has a coupon code in it right here. And so the coupon code is YouTube. And that, whenever somebody signs up with that, Udemy knows that that was traffic that I brought, okay? And then they'll give me 97% of that sale. So what I do is I sell the course for 20 bucks with that coupon because I get almost all of that money. Udemy doesn't get much of it at all. Whereas if you just purchase the course on Udemy without using that coupon, then you'll pay between 10 and like 50 bucks. And I'll only get like 25 to 50% of that because Udemy will consider it a, a course, a purchase that they brought to the platform, right? So... Okay, that was the mistake I made. And because of that, you can see if you look at the your promotion section, let me see if I can zoom in a bit. If we look at this, October 17th, and then we look at the your promotions, it's 45 bucks. And then we look here, my promotions was $200. That's because I enabled the YouTube comment thing after like two weeks. So this number would have been way better um, but I made that mistake so that was like the biggest mistake I've made by far because it I wouldn't the same people would have bought it the same people would have paid the same price and I would have just gotten more money I, I screwed up by not taking credit for this because I didn't know at the time and that was my biggest mistake with the course um, but now we can look at the course itself because when it launched it wasn't like my whole thing with this course is why why should I wait until I've mastered something to make content that can help people 
figure out what they're going to do. When I, I know the little things now, I don't know everything, but I know some parts of the puzzle. So I just want to have a place where I can put every big kind of piece I come across. And then over time, it gets better and better and better and better and better and better, right? So I'm really trying to like, this isn't something that I just kind of like finished and forgot about. It's something that I'm continuously going through and changing to make it include more and more information. Because I don't want this, I don't want people to think that this is a course about bulk drop shipping because it's, that's not what it is. It's, it's not going to show you exactly how to set up a drop shipping business. This is going to show you different tools that you can use. It's going to show you different strategies that people use. It's going to show you the different software that people use. It's showing the you know, possible ways to handle out of stocks, the, all the different scenarios that can come up. It's talking to you about them so that you know that they are a thing that can happen about rolling reserves and account like closure and all, all that kind of stuff. Um, so now I'll go over a little bit about what the course looks like now. Okay. So we, st we have an introduction section and that's just a video. It's like introducing the course, talking about the kind of mentality that you need to succeed. Um, and how to use the course and that's just a video like literally showing what I'm showing now and then talking about my thoughts on how to use it and how to get in touch with me. Um, I encourage people to message me through fa Facebook encouraging them to like ask direct questions to me because it's easier if you're just like hey what is this how do I fix it versus yo and then I'm like yo and then you're like hey and then I'm like what's up and then you're like, not much, how are you? You know, it, it takes, uh, it just, just ask me specific questions. Um, unless you really just want to like kind of chat. Um, but I don't always have the time to respond, but I do my best to, okay? The second section is a bunch of conversations between Marcus Augustine and myself about drop shipping. And the idea of this second section is that I want to make this course something that can benefit everybody, whether they're new to drop shipping or they've been doing it for a while or anybody like anybody who's interested in drop shipping i want this course to be the single place that has the most variety of information versus you know other places that's that's the long-term goal that paired with youtube um but mark's channel is no bs drop shipping here you go and so we did a couple of videos just talking about drop shipping. And these videos are different than all of the other videos in the course because these are just conversations between us. Um, we just chat about sources and suppliers and all this kind of stuff. This section is designed for people who are new to drop shipping and don't really understand the kind of basics of it. If you know what drop shipping is and you have experience with it, then you don't really need to go over any of this stuff okay the rest of the course will be useful though so the third court the third section is all about um, eBay GSP my experience with it and I, I try and it's GSP is its own section here because so many people are really hesitant to use GSP and a lot of people especially eBay sellers talk a lot of shit about GSP and it's absurd because it's a really good program like that if I look at all of my business since I started drop shipping, GSP sales account for like 30, between 30 and 40% of my sales. So these people are saying that 30 to 40% of my business isn't worth doing. It, it just, it's absurd. And it's one of those situations where like people, they just don't try things themselves and they just listen to all the shit that everyone else talks and that's why this has its own section because I think it's really important that you, you open your mind to that enabling GSP will bring you more money. Like you have to understand what kind of to avoid selling with GSP, but it, yeah, it's, it's one of the things that can get you like a 30% increase. That's a lot, like a whole lot, you know? All right, so then we have a section that's all about eBay. And this is my views on customer service, me explaining how account limits work um, and how to raise them, the different store subscriptions you can have, what UPC codes are, kind of how eBay feels about them, how to set up an unpaid item assistant so um, people will like not be able to... Okay, if they say they're going to buy your item and then they don't, then you get your final value fee refunded, which is important. 
and a video about ha handling out of stock sales on eBay and what you should do, what you shouldn't do, um, how to enable eBay GSP, um, the two things that you have to keep in mind so that your account stays above standard, um, what what is necessary to become a top rated seller on eBay, and then setting up your business policies, which are your payment policies, return policies, and shipping policies. So this isn't absolutely everything that you'll have to change as an eBay dropshipper, but it is most of the things that are relevant to eBay. And then this fifth section is all about PayPal. And this is specifically about the different kinds of limitations that PayPal might place on your business. Um, because what I've found is that there's a lot of information about PayPal jail, but there's not as much information about withholding limits or rolling reserves, which are something that almost all people like, oh, oh, okay, I just use a generalization there. I don't mean almost all people. A lot of drop shippers will experience a rolling reserve and these different kinds of PayPal limitations. So it's really good to know what the things are that PayPal can kind of put against you, right? Um, and then there's also ways to work around a rolling reserve, which is what I had to do in order to like get the cash out of my rolling reserve. I basically took out a loan and the amount coming out of the rolling reserve was equal to the loan payments coming back. So anyway, it, it doesn't really matter a whole lot. But there's just there's ways to work around pretty much everything, right? Um, section six is about profitability. So this is about like different things that you can do to make your business more profitable. And a lot of this is about shaving off percentages, right? So the first lecture talks about the concepts that profitability and sales are very, very different. It's very easy to produce sales. What's hard is to produce profitable sales. And the more profitable the sales are, the harder they are to produce. Uh, so it's really important that you understand, especially in drop shipping, because there's gonna be tons of situations where people just show you big numbers and they're like, all right, listen to me. And the sad thing is like, Okay, yeah, if, if they're, it's, I'm not saying you shouldn't listen to those people, but there's something to be said about, like, what you're in dropshipping for. Because if you really want to change your life, you have to focus on learning. Because it's not about, like, whether it's going to work or not. It's about whether you are going to educate yourself as much as possible and then apply what you learn. Um, because ultimately, success boils down to your ability to figure out what your next best step is. If you're always looking at plans that other people have laid out for you, those may work at some point, but they are inevitably going to stop working and people will still keep teaching you those things, right? So this course really isn't designed to teach you a specific thing that works right now. This is a, it's one place that you can go that has as much information as I can cram into it about drop shipping so that you can make the best, most educated decision for what you want to do with your dropshipping business. And that's something that I really, really think about a lot when I'm working on this course because I don't want, I want this course to last over time. I don't want it to become a course that goes out of date, right? So obviously that'll happen inevitably, but for me it's really important that the, the course is about teaching people to do their thing, right? Versus laying a step-by-step -step process out right all right i apologize the music is buffering so <laughs> that's been kind of inconsistent okay so that is all about how to use gift cards to be more profitable how to use cash back and like tax exemption and all that kind of stuff this section is just about lowering the percentages that you pay so you can earn more money of the sales that you're having that already exist right the seventh section is about figuring out what items to post. And I, I made this a separate section because I feel like a lot of dropshippers, when they start in particular, they waste so much time thinking about what to post. So what is best is to just post things and observe results. Like if you post a bunch of stuff and you're not happy with the results, okay, you can come to some conclusions, con some conclusions off of that. But if you're thinking about stuff so much that those thoughts are stopping you from posting the items in the first place, then that's really not a, a, a healthy train of thought and it's not going to bring you much success right that's something most people do at the beginning so this section I was like alright what information can I give people so that they don't have as much trouble figuring out what to post so first is the concept of you don't want to um, whenever you're looking you're doing item research you want to refrain from like finding an item and then posting it and then looking for an item and then posting it you really want to make sure that even if you only want to post five items, you are searching for items, finding a list of items, so being like, all right, I want this one, and this one, and this one, and this one, 
And then after you make that list, then either right then or another time, you come through and you post the items. You'll find that if you compartmentalize this, you become much more efficient in your posting process. Um, and it also enables you to kind of take a step back and assess things better. So I really encourage people to do that. And then the second section is just how to quickly get URLs of items. So you basically just, you minimize the time spent finding items to like, you see an item you like, you right click on it, open a new tab, and then there's a process that that just gets saved. Um, so you can just be like, oh, I like that, I like that, and that, and that, and then that you have your list, right? It makes it really, really quick. Okay. And then what I really think is that the most useful thing in this section is that I show 1,000 of my sales through Ju July, June, and August. And these are all items that sold. And I show the price it sold for, the title, and like one of the pictures. Because I can't show every single thing. It's like a 30-minute video. That would take, it would take hours if I showed like detailed information about every sale. So what I do is I just look at my sales history and scroll down um, talking about the items that are showing up, the ones that I had problems with, the ones that went well, the ones that were more profitable, the ones that had more returns, all that kind of stuff. Because ultimately, I think that this is what will help people the most in figuring out what to post because this gives them a starting point. And whether they copy the items or that it watching this video will is likely to give you an idea and then you go through with that idea and then you know, okay, I saw him sell that. That gives me this idea that I want to sell this. And I think it just it's great because you can just watch it and then just as you think about something, just pause it, you know, and then keep going. Um, one second. Maria, I'm recording. Can you get the door? Gracias. Sorry about that. Um, okay, so next is sources and suppliers, and this is just talking about my experience with Walmart, um, which is the source that I use the most, and um, how it's different than Home Depot, Amazon, um, how to use a simple proxy to just browse sources. That's when you want, um, you want a source to think that you're in the U.S. or something else so that it doesn't show you the international version of the website. You can just use like a basic VPN. Um, to work around that. It's not illegal or anything. It's literally just it's just a software thing. Um, IP addresses, all that fun stuff. Okay, and I also talk about this sources and suppliers list, which is here. Um, I think I actually need to update this link. No, it still works. Okay, cool. So this is an open source document that is filled with um, a bunch of different possible drop shipping suppliers. And these, a lot of these suppliers work with Hydrolister, which is where I originally got the list. But you can use this document if you're trying to think about like a different place you want to try out. It shows you the marketplace that the place is based in. Um, it's pretty cool. So it's sorted by UK right now for some reason. But you can sort stuff by looking at it here, right? So if we wanted to do, like we could just disable this and click OK. Now it's all hidden because nothing's blank. <laughs> I messed that up. We need to clear, I think. Blanks. Maybe that's it. USA. I let everybody edit this, so sometimes it gets broken, and then I have to like fix it later. Oh, no. Here we go. Woohoo! Cool. All right, I got a bit distracted there, but I figured that was worth showing to you. Um, so there's also another version of that with software that I'll talk to you about in a second. Uh, the ninth section of the course is about creating eBay listings. And this is just kind of the concepts behind the different mechanisms that you can use to make a listing. So we have manual listing, which is what a lot of people do when they first start, or at least used to. Now there's so many software options that this isn't as common, but that's when you make the eBay listing yourself. You copy the photos, copy the description, do all of that kind of stuff. That's manual listing. Semi-automatic listing is when you, you use some kind of tool that speeds up the process, but you still look at each listing. And um, so this is basically single listing, single listing, and then automatic listing is bulk listing. Automatic listing is when you paste lists of URLs and then um, the tool posts only those URLs. It doesn't give you any kind of like feedback or anything. It just posts all of them automatically, right? And then there's a video about how to list variations using Hydrolister. But I'm actually, I'm gonna move this video into the software and tool introduction section, okay? 
Um, all right, sweet. So let's keep going. Where are we at? Where are we at? Here we go. We're right here. All right. Okay, so next section, section 10. Um, section 10 is about the bulk approach. And this is about, this is the part of the course that is about bulk drop shipping. I really don't want people to think that this is a guide to bulk drop shipping. It's not. It's a, it's a database of information related to drop shipping, of which some of that is about bulk, okay? And how to go about it, how you need to think a little bit differently, um, the things that produce bad results in bulk, the things to be hesitant of, and what I haven't actually done much of is a video about how to, um, I'm going to add more to the bulk section um, because there's like three or four more videos I'm going to add. Uh, most of the bulk section is about doing CSV compares with Skugrid because it's a pain. <laughs> so that one has like four sections, which is crazy. Okay. Now the 11th section is um, what my daily work looked like in this course or in when I was drop shipping at the time I made this course. Um, so I just showed, like, I got, t like, two or three, I think they're 20-minute videos, right? Yeah. I just did 20 minutes of work of the customer message part and the orders. Um, and then I think this first one. Yeah, and then the returns. Yeah, so just because I was like, all right, how can we get... I could explain how the business works and all that, but why don't I just show people? So they don't have to watch this, but if you want to, you can see, okay, this is the daily work that I was doing. This is what it looks like. And if you get into drop shipping, regardless of what kind of business model you do, you're going to see the same kinds of things that I was seeing, right? It's just going to be a little bit different based on, you know, the different posting decisions and software tools that you pick. Um, and then the 12th section is the section that I'm working on the most, um, trying to make it as big as possible. And this is the section about all the different software and tools that's available to dropshippers now. So we have introductions to Pricematic, Infinii, Hydrolister, Session Buddy, uh, Skugrid, um, and then there's stuff about how to use Google Sheets, Sublime Text 3, um, Update Duck. Um, anything, anytime that I learn more about a software, I add it to this part, okay? So it talks about how to use Google Translate and how you can like double check it to make sure that you're not like sounding weird with the translator. A lot of people when they use a translator, they just enter it and then just assume that it's right. But if you get in the habit of copying whatever you, uh, whatever the translator provided you and then just reversing it back into your language, if it sounds weird, it'll change what you entered in order to, in, in order to like like if you if you used the wrong word or use something that was too complicated, um, it'll change the English meaning for you. So then that that's a sign that okay, I need to shorten this so that it's not as confusing. And if you do that and get used to it, then it's pretty easy to provide like pretty good customer service, even if you don't know the language that the person is speaking. Especially if you have experience providing customer service in English already, because it's you know it's pretty similar. Um, all right, and then the 13th section is a section that Becky did. Um, Becky is a YouTuber um, whose channel is Broke to Boss Girl. Becky dropships in the UK. Um, so she doesn't live in the UK at the moment, but she's from the UK. And she makes videos about that. Okay, so she did a section about how it's kind of different. Um, and, you know, if you look at these videos, then you can find links to her YouTube channel and all that kind of stuff. And then Carlos also did a section here. And Carlos's section is um, Amateur Drop Shipping Guru, I think. Carlos's, <laughs> Carlos's channel is in Spanish. So give me a second. got to find it. Bum, 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 bum. Looks like we're going to YouTube it. YouTube Amateur Dropship Guru. Spelling amateur wrong. All right. I'm an idiot. I just realized I can just do this. Boom. Boom. Ha ha. Bueno. And so Carlos's section is specifically for Spanish speakers. Here we go. Now he changed the name of his channel to his full name. Interesting. Interesting. All right. So that's there. 
and he just kind of talks about what the situation is like if you are a drop shipper and you're living in a Latin American country um, and you want to drop ship versus if you are living in the States and you want to drop ship. Okay. And then the end of it is just final videos. All right. And then a list of like my affiliate links if people want to use them. All right, guys. Thanks. I appreciate that you took the time to watch this video. I hope that you found that useful. I will see you next time. Ciao.